This is why I don't ever use pre-workouts. I haven't done since 2014 and I'll never use them again. Now you could use pre-workouts fairly consistently, I'm sure nothing like this would ever happen, but it is possible. It happened to me and that's why I'm making this video. It can cause adverse reactions in different ways. It's not something I'd ever recommend. If you need a bit of a kick, you can use coffee or caffeine powder. These pre-workout formulas, these uh, pump formulas rather, complete and utter garbage. Just eat properly, salt, go into the gym well hydrated. You're never gonna have a problem with a pump. Train harder, get closer to failure more frequently. The only reason you should be suffering with uh, pump issues is if you're extremely lean. So back in 2014, um, I was working in the commercial gym. This was kind of summertime. Uh, one of my colleagues said, you fancy a pre-workout before a session? I said, yeah, great. It was a less known brand. I can't remember the name. They got it online. So I had a scoop, had a session. I think it was upper body, had a really good session. But it started to feel a bit strange straight after. I remember my right calf feeling a bit weird. Like, uh, like a fan was blowing air on it, a bit fuzzy. Didn't think much of it, went to bed, woke up the next day, literally from my neck down to my toes, split right down the center on my right side. It was very, very fuzzy, almost like I had pins and needles and I couldn't distinguish between hot and cold, couldn't really feel like touch as much either. So that was pretty worrying. Had a massage, um, think I did a session, a back session either on that day or the next day. I had a very hardcore mentality. It was very, very rare. I still do ever miss sessions. So I trained through it. And I remember specifically on a single arm cable row, really struggling on my left hand. I could barely pull the same weight of half the reps that I was doing on my right side. So I really started to panic then. Um, and I went to the doctors. Um, he didn't think much of it. Basically sent me away. He said, you slept funny. So continued, carry on um, for another couple of days and I started to notice that I was limping. My left leg was getting really, really uh, weak. So I went back to the doctors. Again, he said, you probably injured yourself. See what happens. Okay, so by this point, the weekend rolled round. I remember having a family meal and my left hand, um, I couldn't use the fork properly. I had no dexterity. I wasn't able to manipulate my fingers to hold the fork properly. So it was extremely worrying. Um, on the Monday, I went back to the doctors. I, I said to him, look, you need to sort this out. I'm, I'm not well. <laughs> Stop sending me, sending me away. So he got my hands. He shook one hand, shook the other. Obviously, noticed there was a big difference in grip. Then he started to panic and uh, wrote our letter, went to the hospital. They'd thought I'd had a stroke. So I was in the stroke ward for a few days um, in hospital for, for a week, I think. Uh, so they tested me out, um, blood works, um, MRI, lumbar puncture. So we're testing a stroke, that was clear. Then they tested for MS, that was clear. The final prognosis was unknown, possibly viral. I remember the whole time I was there, I was researching. I, I asked my colleague, what was the product? Found out a name, did some Googling, found a, an ingredient in it. I can't remember what it was called now. That had some references online to nerve reactions. Some people would experience nerve issues from having this ingredient. So that made sense to me. That was my gut feeling. Um, and I kept explaining to this um, to the uh, doctors and they just wouldn't listen. They would rather blame it on a possible viral infection than use the common sense explanation. That just sums up this this country's uh, medical system, in my opinion. If they can't put you in the box, they don't know what to do with you. Um, but I remember having a saline drip and uh, start to feel better quite quickly. It was almost like it was washing the toxins out of my body. That's how I felt, genuinely. Um, so they discharged me, but I still had the side effects uh, for a period of time. I remember having to do dumbbell work, single arm work, single leg work with the cables exclusively, because if I did barbell work, my right side would take over. And eventually, after weeks and weeks of hard work, I got that strength back up on my left side. Um, but my right side, it stayed kind of um, desensitized for a long period of time. I couldn't distinguish between hot and cold. It kind of feels weird still, in certain areas of my calf, my mid-back. It's still not 100%. So I really struggled and dealt with this issue for months um, after I had this pre-workout. So it's definitely um, opened my eyes to the dangers of pre-workouts. You know, even if something like that never happens to you, pre-workouts are not a good idea um, for a number of reasons. The uh, possible uh, heart issues, possible fatigue that can build up through over-usage, over-stimulation, 
so yeah, it's not something that I ever want to relive um, and go through again. So hence why I'll never be touching a pre-workout. Just stay clear. Stick to caffeine if you need a bit of a boost. Get a good pump. Get your food right, your salt intake. Go into the gym with plenty of water um, and you'll be just fine. So that's the story for today's video. If you want any more, I've got uh, you know a few more interesting stories I can tell you. Then let me know in the comments section below. Let me know your thoughts about pre-workouts. Where do you stand with them? Um, any ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments section. Check out all my links for my coaching and uh, Excel templates down below. Um, and stay strong. I'll see you on the next video.